Hello, Year 10. So, welcome to the first of two sessions that uh, this PowerPoint is based on. So, the PowerPoint is saved in my homework, and you can be following along as I'm talking. You can edit it, add, type things in yourself if you want to, um, or you can be writing responses. I don't mind. So, this first session is about the themes and thought processes I'd like you to put in before we start thinking about the characters in too much detail on what they do because the more you have thought about things, key ideas, and your own personal experiences, the better understanding of those characters and their motivations you have, and the better you'll do. So, going to be looking at in this first session the themes of gangs and morality and examining the themes of leadership and peer pressure. So the first thing I want you to think about is gangs and morality and what you think of makes a gang and are gangs moral? It's a word, a gang, isn't it, that we give to a group but is everyone a gang is every group a gang there's connotations to the word gang isn't there so i'd want you to have a think about about that and why that is so what is a gang above gangs so a gang what do you think makes a gang a group of people does gender matter Age matter? Does attitude matter? So we've got the idea here of the bruv thing. Where's that from? Why is that an association with gangs? So is this a gang? Is that what you think of as a gang? Why do you think this is a gang? Because they're dressed the same? Same food, same clothes, same shoes, same tracky bottom hoodies. In fact, the covering their face is a bit antisocial, isn't it? in their face because they don't want a photographer to know who they are, the people who look at this picture to know that they're in a gang. Is there a shame in being in a gang? Is there pride in being in a gang? What about the setting? Look at the backdrop behind them. Where are they? Is that what we expect of a gang? So what makes this a gang? What about this group? Are they a gang? They're all standing up straight, the other guys are all slouched. So if it's about attitude, then that can these guys be a gang too? If they're doing the same things, so they're smiling, the, other, the others were like glaring. It was about commonality and things in common and all being the same, part of the group. Does that make them a gang? These guys all casually dressed, jeans, trainers, tops. Does that mean they're a gang? Why would the first group be called a gang and not these guys? So like I said, if you wanted to type onto your own version of this PowerPoint or write things out, that would be good. So think of words associated with gangs. What words can you see here that these two groups have in common? What is so different about these people? Is there anything different? Why do you look at one more positively than 
I'll just delete any other. Think about ethnicity, class, wealth, education. Okay, let's move on. Well, oh. December 2010, student riots. Well, the, the group on the right in the previous slide, they're all students. Rioting, criminal. What do you think about that? The most educated, the future of our country. Rioting, graffitiing, vandalising against the government. Again, we've got more riots in society. Things being smashed. Anti-society, anti-establishment, anti-government, anti-authority. I wish that people would stop calling these youths gangs. It gives them more power than they have. They are not gangs. They're just groups of bored youth. Or how far do you agree with this statement? So what do you think about that? Is that true? Why? So what about this? So do some people do things that they never would have done alone because they are led by others? Easily influenced? Do you know there's someone that can always get you to do something? You shouldn't. Is there a friend that can convince you to steal something, take something, shoplift? Or do you know other people that are easily led by others? And then this last interesting question Are the morals of a group different to individual interpretations of morality? So are the morals of a group able to be worse or higher than if you were an individual? As an individual, can a group help you be a better person? As an individual, can a group help you to grow? Be strong, feel confident. Well, where where could that become a negative? Interesting, isn't it? Are some people braver when they're in a group? Some people more willing to take risks and do dangerous or silly or illegal things when they're in a group. So have a think about that. What do you think about calling youths gangs? Or that word gangs. Does that have power? Does that have a power? And just being thought of as a gang, does that give that group, the kudos, give them an ego boost, make them feel special, make them feel good. Is that a bad thing? Is that a good thing? So if you've got ideas about those things, write them down. I'd like to see them. So what about, you know, these clean cut people there on that slide? Being a good friend, what, what is it that makes a good friend? If you thought of three things that would make a good friend, you know, if you're you and your best friend, or you and a group of friends at school, you know, what do they do that make them a good friend? Can that tip? Can that become a negative? Could those qualities, you know, could those positive things that you think are good, be a gang code, be a negative. 
E2 binding. So any ideas on this? Write them down. That would be interesting. So, was loyalty something you thought about? Was that the top one? To be loyal, you know, not to talk about people behind your back. Let's talk about you behind your back. You know, to help out, be friendly, supportive. What good qualities? Loyalty is clearly something that people want, isn't it? So, in situation positive or negative. So think about you know this idea. Why is it taboo to grass on friends? Grassing. When does loyalty to what is right override loyal override loyalty to the group? Would you expect parents to take you to the police if you have committed a terrible crime? Why? Either way, does it depend on what the crime would be? What about you if you knew someone in your family had committed about if it was a friend? Does it depend what the crime is? If it's stolen or if you'd hurt someone? Does that matter? Because they're all serious crimes. Still maybe have a jail sentence depending on how much is being stolen. Finally, we expect the police to support you if you had a crime committed against you and what do you think about the police? So, your individuals with all your own experiences. What do you think about the police? Do you trust in our justice system? Do you think that the police and the courts are something to be proud of? Something that you would be willing to support? How do you think about the police? Are you glad that we have a strong police? Or do you think they're Corrupt and untrustworthy. So this idea of loyalty. Is it, why is it important? How can loyalty be achieved? How can you get loyalty from your friends? How can you prove loyalty? So this is a cast photo from the original production of it's a little sneak peek appetizer so you can see this group do they look like a gang do they look like friends all sort of wearing sensible clothes for hanging out in sort of autumn in the woods hats jackets hoodies boots trainers so these costume choices. What makes them look like a group of friends, a gang? So there's a little sneak peek. When you know the characters, you might be able to guess who's who. So remember, this is what we're looking at: gangs and morality groups and what is right and wrong and then looking at uh, leadership and peer pressure so that's what we're going to move on to now so please write down any ideas i'll be interested so leadership have you thought about this have you got a leader are you a leader have you got a leader in your peer group your friends your family what makes a good leader of a group can you think of examples of good leaders? What qualities do they have? What about the opposite of the leaders? What about those people that like to be led? Do some people always have to be led? Is it a choice? Is it just a personality? Can other people step up in a crisis to become a leader? There's that saying about good leaders best leaders being those people that don't want to lead. Is that true, do you think? Why would why would that be true? So do some people do things that they know alone because they're led by others? So have you had experiences like that, friends? 
are the morals of a group different to individual interpretations of morality? There's lots of interesting questions brought up by that, isn't it? So what's good for the group or good for the individual? Can, are they always the same thing? Not necessarily. What's more important? So here um, we've got a few clips. So we've got uh, some emotional footage for productions of DNA. So this photo's costume, you can see their commonality, the group idea. We've got school uniform. Quite a handy, easy one to do when you come to your exam, as long as it's explained properly. Have a look at the clip. Um, I can't play the clip, so you can pause me now and play the clip and answer the questions. What happens? What's the mood? What is the atmosphere? What can you tell about the types of characters? So this mood, this atmosphere, lasting through the play. What do you think about it? And then we've got some more clips. So uh, you've got the PowerPoint. On, so my homework, the links are live here. So you, you should be able to be watching them. So imagine that you and your friends have done something awful. How do you feel afterwards? How would you act? Explain your feelings about it, whether you think you can carry on as normal. If you been part of something you regret in a group. Maybe you weren't the instigator, maybe you didn't really do it, maybe you didn't mean to do it. What do you think you would do as an individual? Could you walk away and hope nothing would happen? Would you have to go home and speak to someone about it? Would you have to tell your mum? Or could you keep it a secret? Would that guilt, would that worry be something that would eat you up? Or would you be fine? Just hoping, because it wasn't really you anyway. So, different characters, different people react differently. So, I hope you enjoyed those clips. Lots of good DNA-inspired film footage things on YouTube. So you can have a look around there if, you, if you'd like to. So, have a think about your own experiences of peer pressure. Have you seen it succeeding in making someone conform while others refuse? So, do some people say they're not going to do what the group want? Are you one of those people? Do you think you can do that? Or do you think most people conform and go along with the group? Which one's easier? Why? And what strength of will does it take to walk away from something you know is wrong when others say it's right? So, stereotypes of peer pressure, isn't it? So, you know that drinking alcohol can lead to dangerous situations. You know that taking drugs is illegal. You know all the advice is saying don't do it, it is wrong for someone of your age. Why do people still do it? When your two or three friends say smoke this or take this, drink this, why do we find it difficult when we know it's wrong? And then the young people fear ostracism from the group. So, so to be ostracised is cast out, pushed away. So do young people fear ostracism from the group more than anything? Don't want to be a Billy No Mates? Is that, is that a key factor? What do you think? If you go against a group, they're your friends. How, why is that difficult?
So this is coming to the end of our first session on DNA. Obviously the PowerPoint continues after this to look more closely at the opening sections. So let's just have a think before we start reading. DNA, what do you think is going to happen? Why is it called DNA? The first line in the play is dead. What does that tell you? What about the punctuation? So what about the word? Punctuation. So that's a little sneak peek. So look at the intro and the characters in the play. So you can read ahead page 9 to 19 um, for next session. You'll be ahead if you do, um, which will be handy. So this is the end of session one. Session two will be next week and uh, you can hear me then and